Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to start by first of all paying tribute to uh, the Minister. I think this is the first time uh, this week I've had a chance to uh, uh, speak uh, with the Minister at the dispatch box. I've worked closely with the Minister uh, while I was chairing the APPG for small and micro businesses, uh, where the Minister was uh, uh, the Vice Chair and, and she was always a great source of so uh, support uh, and um, an advocate for uh, small and micro businesses. So I, uh, I wish her all the best and long may it continue. Um, and I also want to pay tribute uh, to uh, my honourable friend uh, from Watford for uh, doggedly pursuing uh, this agenda yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and pushing uh, this bill. Mr Deputy Speaker, the West Midlands uh, is known for its great es exports over many, many centuries. And the, you, you, you may not know, but the Good honourable friend, friend. Honor friend was born in my constituency. Uh, so I'm glad to count him as one of the exports uh, that has gone out and uh, uh, does, is do, continuing to do great things uh, in uh, Parliament and for the uh, people of Watford. Um, and I thank the member for bringing this bill forward. It is, a, it, it is uh, as my uh, honourable friend for Charnwood has just said, it is, it is about equity and fairness. And um, uh, it, the, my honourable friend for Watford has uh, pursued this uh, agenda uh, and made sure uh, that the government recognises uh, the importance of uh, recognising the, the role of tips uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the lives of uh, hospitality workers. Um, and I, am, I must say I'm a little bit surprised that we're even having to have uh, this debate. So many times uh, when I've been uh, you know, experiencing the great hospitality in, uh, in my constituency, I often wonder uh, about what has already been said, whether those tips actually reach workers uh, and, their, uh, and their pockets, or uh, does the service charge, uh, is, it, is that the service that the business and the employer is providing, or is it really, um, does it go uh, to uh, the employees? And I'm, uh, I, I'm very pleased that the, uh, there will be a code of practice that will define this um, and will try and uh, address the imbalance of equity uh, and fairness. And I think one thing I wanted to just pick up on, my, my honourable friend for Charnwood just stated that actually the majority Majority of businesses uh, you know, do the right thing and uh, I think he was right in this and we should recognise that, that the majority of hospitality businesses do uh, make sure that their staff are uh, taken care of uh, and they try and instill that level of equity and fairness but clearly that isn't the case across the sector which is why we need to do uh, this uh, bill. Now it may be Mr Deputy Speaker that we aren't a tipping society. Um, uh, it, it may well be. I mean, I look at, uh, across the pond uh, to the United States, and of course, uh, tipping is a uh, integral part of um, uh, what uh, they have in the hospitality sector. I, when I've been, when so many of my friends have been, and you know, they, they've always been told uh, that you know, please make sure that you tip because it's a, it's a part of uh, the income that the hospitality sector um, uh, generates um, uh, and workers generate. And uh, of course, um, it'd be remiss of me not to recognise the great work that the government has done in terms of getting the national living wage to where it's at, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, making sure that there, there is a, uh, a threshold. But of course, uh, tips are a necessary add-on. And in the, in the context of where inflation is where it's at, of course, uh, it, this is a very timely uh, bill uh, that will start to look at and address uh, the issue, issues of uh, equity and fairness. Um, I did have a number of points that I just wanted to raise uh, with the Minister, and I, I'm sure the Minister will address this, and I think it's really been touched upon, but it is around the service charge uh, and the code of practice. And when I speak to hospitality businesses, um, they've not had an easy time uh, over the last few years. Um, it, is a, it has been incredibly challenging uh, for the obvious reasons that you know lockdowns aren't uh, a, a friend to many parts of the economy but specifically to the hospitality sector um, who have had to survive uh, who uh, you know and, the, and the, many of them have been very grateful for the support that the government's given uh, for whether it's business rates relief or uh, helping with bounce back loans or the furlough scheme that they've all been a, a great asset uh, but I was intrigued to learn that many people who were in the hospitality sector uh, where businesses were able to take advantage of the furlough scheme many of their workers uh, ended up getting second jobs um, and then uh, didn't end up returning to uh, to, to um, uh, the original employer, the hospitality sector, because they found other jobs that were uh, paying much more. So, um, uh, and that has contributed to 
a significant uh, shortage of workers in the hospitality sector, um, a shortage that was there pre-COVID, um, and you know the the, the issues uh, in, in, when it comes to skills uh, have been uh, long-standing, uh, but certainly have been made more acute because of uh, because of COVID and the the decisions uh, that people have had to make. And in the context of that, of course, if you have a tipping system uh, that is in statute that is supported by a code of practice, that is, uh, embodies the uh, elements of fairness, of justice, of equity, uh, those uh, quintessential kind of British values. Um, uh, I, I hope that that will certainly go some way in starting to uh, redress the, uh, the, the acuteness of that skill shortage and uh, maybe be an asset to the hospitality sector in starting to recruit again. It's not the only way uh, we'll address that issue and you know, I, I'm sure the Small Business Minister uh, will be working hard to look at that, uh, but certainly this will uh, be a great support uh, in doing that. So I hope the, the Minister will be able to uh, provide some uh, clarity in that. Um, the other part aspect of this, of course, is around the service charge. Um, I know, of course, that I've been at businesses. Uh, I have to say, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm less confrontational than my honourable friend uh, from Workington, uh, and I sometimes do pay the service charge, not knowing whether I can challenge it or whether I should challenge it. Um, um, uh, and uh, may, perhaps I should, uh, you know, channel my uh, ch channel my inner Workington man. But uh, the, 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 the truth is. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or, or hardly poor woman uh, even. But the truth is, uh, the question still stands uh, how the code of practice will address uh, the, if those service charges are necessary for what we do, uh, what businesses uh, deem necessary for the service that they are providing, uh, how will uh, that uh, be addressed in terms of what, what I don't want to see is an additional line with a new title uh, being on there and being an additional uh, cost uh, that consumers still have to pay. Uh, because that may well undermine uh, the, the notion that we should then tip uh, because we're already being subject to another percentage. And, uh, perhaps that's something that the Code of Practice uh, will look at. Um, while I have the Minister's ear, I, I last, uh, in, the, in the last two to three weeks I actually attended a round table uh, and that Nailcoat Hall, uh, which is a great hospitality venue. And I, uh, Meriden uh, bordering uh, Birmingham and Coventry and being in a beautiful setting in the West Midlands uh, and having the airport uh, and having great uh, connections uh, is, a, uh, is a very viable and uh, it, it, it's a great place for hospitality business to flourish um, and therefore when things are great it, it is fantastic to see the hospitality sector thriving uh, but obviously in a post-covid world uh, there's also been uh, I, I, a lot of my inbox has been taken up by trying to address some of the issues whether it was in the early days of covid trying to get uh, liquidity and uh, loans uh, to help them survive and uh, then thrive or whether it's now in terms of helping them through the issues that they've had and one of the things Clearly, the hospitality sector wanted to uh, send uh, a message to government uh, via the Member of Parliament uh, was to get this message across that actually, while uh, in a post-COVID recovery, they've actually had a reasonably uh, good period where people have returned, etc. There is still a lot of work that needs to be done and we shouldn't underestimate the damage uh, that COVID has done to the hospitality sector. So again, I go back to that point about clarity in that code of practice because I think they would welcome that uh, and having that guidance and uh, uh, to help hospitality businesses to do that. But I'll, on that note, I will also pay tribute again to those hospitality workers, uh, not those, not just those who've been working, but those businesses because the majority of those businesses recognise that how important their workers are and how important retention is uh, and how important it is uh, to uh, create an environment that they're able to recruit um, uh, because your staff of course make uh, uh, make up and define your business uh, and those businesses that don't have a good environment that their reputation gets out there uh, and so uh, as much as I wish we didn't have to do this bill because I, I think uh, businesses should be doing the right thing and the majority of businesses do I understand uh, why they do that and I'd welcome a meeting with the, with the, with the minister at some point to discuss some of the issues uh, around the, the hospitality sector uh, and what we can uh, do going further um, 
I, I think I'm just going to reflect uh, on just one final point, really, uh, on this, and it's something my father always said. Um, uh, you know, he, well, I, I say to say that he still runs the business and he still uh, adheres to this, but he always said, you know, you, if you take care of your staff for even one day, they'll take care of you for a lifetime. Um, and uh, that is a notion that I certainly uh, took in business and I certainly hope I can uh, take forward uh, in whatever role I, I have uh, throughout my life. Much.